Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. In this video, I'm going to go over a few tips for using, cutting, and hooking gizzard shad for catfish bait. Uh, I get a lot of messages uh, about different ways to use it, different size baits. How do you hook them? How do you cut it? I'm going to go over a few of those in this video. And the first one I'm going to go over uh, is one that a lot of us are faced with uh, when we want big bait. We want big bait for a big catfish, or we just want a big bait to eliminate small catfish. And uh, this first one is going to be a tip on how to take small baits, how to make these small baits into a big bait. All right, folks, what I got here is basically three different age classes of gizzard shad, 10 inch, 8 inch, and a 6 inch, some of the smaller ones. Uh, all of them are good baits. All of them have good different applications. Now, you can fish one of these whole if you want to, maybe cut the tail off of it. Cut some out of the back section here so it can bleed a little bit, but uh, you can fish it whole if you like. You can fish any of these baits whole. A lot of people though are taking baits this size, cutting it up, taking a head, a couple of mid sections, depending on how big you want to fish it, and uh, using it that way. Generally speaking, these smaller baits, most people are fishing these whole, um, or at least just cutting the tail off of them or opening them up a little bit. Not too many chunks of bait on this thing unless you're going to be fishing for smaller channel casts and you can probably cut it up into two or three pieces one of the things i do on this bait right here uh, i cut the tail off and i do what i call a polish fillet i fillet it from the back go down about that far cut back up this way so you get this little meat flap break that bone right there in the back then what i do is i take this Actually put it onto the hook this way. Basically makes a small bait into a big bait. A lot of gut presentation. You got a piece there with a lot of scent. Got that with a lot of scent. So you take what is generally a small bait and you make it into a big one. I put that on a Santee style rig. This is a little EVA foam float. Float it up off the bottom. That bait right there will catch a catfish. Well, the next one I'm going to go over is a slightly bigger gizzard shad. Now, keep in mind, folks, you can use these things live. If you're catching these things in a cast net and can keep them alive, feel free to use them live. You can also use them whole. Many people will throw these things out and do nothing but hook them through the nose and chunk them in the water and let fish pick up on them. I, like a lot of people, I prefer mine cut mainly for scent distribution. Uh, sometimes you may feel the baits are too big and you don't want to use them whole, and that's why you're cutting them. But... Biggest thing is for scent. That is the reason we cut these things. So I'm going to go over a few little things that I do here with these baits, some ways you can cut them, and uh, hopefully that'll help you hook up on some more fish. At least you would like these two baits, and what I'll do generally on a fish this size is I cut the tail off. I do not use tails. I'm not a fan of them. They flutter around. Chunk them in the water. I chum the fish. When I'm doing something like this. I'll cut some small baits. I call these my feeler baits. To kind of see what's out there. See if there's just even some small fish. Go with a little bit bigger segments. Got me a head, a midsection. Now some people will cut this out down here so that you don't have this little pocket. I leave the guts in there. I like the guts. I think they uh, provide some good scent, some good smell. But if you're drifting and dragging, a lot of people will cut this out. Basically cut this in half right here so that this section's gone so that you don't get this open gut pocket that will flutter in the current. But I'm gonna fish with that. Again, guys, uh, using circle hooks, which is what I use, what I suggest everybody use, you barely hook these baits, okay? You're not burying it in there. Getting the lip of it, you see that right there? There's a scale on the tip of that hook. That can keep you from catching a fish, that little bitty thing right there. That can keep you from catching a fish. So make sure you get those scales off that tip. You can see a lot of hook, hook exposed hooks barely in there and that bait's ready to go now while i do not like the tails on any bait fish the opposite in a fish i love and i think it's one of the best baits around and that is the head on a gizzard chad or really any bait fish i love fishing with the heads i've caught a lot of good fish on them uh the good thing about using gizzard chad heads versus some other baits uh is that really there's not a bad way to hook it as long as you've got a lot of hook visible with the circle hook uh, some baits you have to be careful to run the hook through their mouth to keep the mouth shut so that it doesn't flail open, especially for drifting or dragging baits. But gizzards have a fairly small mouth, and uh, you can really hook these baits about any way you want to. I'll show you how I do it. 
That right there is one of my favorite pieces of catfish bait, the head. A couple different ways you can hook these things. You can hook them through the nose holes here, which would be going through there like that. You can come up through the bottom lip and come out the top, or you can hook it right back here. I kind of like this because it seems that when a fish takes it, it seems to tear out of the meat easier. It goes into it, so I'll hook them right like that. Dangles down, comes up, good head presentation. Fish takes, they try to take a bait head first. So, comes up, boom, got it. Circle hook rolls into place. Now don't throw out those smaller baits, even if you're fishing for big fish. Here's my strategy on those baits. I always put some out around the bait. I call them feeler baits. It's kind of to feel around and see what's going on and what's out there. Uh, sometimes you'll notice that even if you have big baits, some fish will try to hit it. You'll get those nibbles. Uh, with those smaller baits, if you've got a bunch of feeding fish around, they can eat those baits. You'll catch them. You'll know they're in there. Here's my strategy. I believe that generally... If I'm fishing for trophy fish, trophy fish swim alone. They stay alone. They stay, or at least in groups with larger fish. Now, you can always catch a trophy fish uh, when you're catching some smaller fish. It's possible. But time and time again, most of the time when I catch trophy fish, I am not catching a lot of smaller fish. So if I got those feeler baits out, I'm catching a bunch of little fish, and I'm targeting big fish, that's usually the sign I'm, I'm going to pick up, move on, and go somewhere else. And now that leads me to these smaller baits. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes these are what big fish are hitting. Don't know why that is. But same thing with these. Go up in underneath that scale. See, there you go again. There's another scale on it. Get that off there. You got a good bait ready to go. Like I said, I'll put these in the water. Sometimes bigger fish are hitting them, but it's also a good way just to see what's in here. Just to see what's eating. See if you're in a place that's got nothing but little fish. Well, as you've seen, scales are important. They're important to keep off your hook tip. They literally, folks, will keep you from catching a fish. Uh, that little bitty scale uh, will keep that hook from getting penetration. And the bigger the shad get, the bigger the scales get. So as you move up to some of these bigger fish, like the ones I'm getting ready to show you, you've got to pay even more attention to make sure that those scales are not on those tips. And I'm going to show you with these bigger fish, there's something else I do there with the gut pocket uh, that'll help you out. I'm going to say these are big ones. Like I said, even on the big ones, I don't keep the tail. Get a couple of small chunks off of it. And again, you can take these as big or as small as you want them. Depending on what you're wanting to eliminate from the uh, equation. Here's a section here. It's got some eggs in it. I haven't spawned yet. What I was saying earlier about a lot of people cut that piece away. So you got nothing but an open piece there. Like that eliminates that fluttering there. But good chunk of bait. Let's get it in the water. Again, I've eliminated the gut pocket out of that one. I'm just going to put that hook right through the top. Boom, another shad, uh, scale on that, sorry. That one's good to go. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.